Welcome back to the Crypto Watch channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now we can see that the price of Bitcoin has broken below this important moving average, which tells us where the Bitcoin price is likely about to go next. And on top of that, if you're looking at this chart right here, we can see that right now truly is a crucial time in the market based on this signal, which I'll be talking more about in just a moment. So definitely stick around. First of all, starting off on the one week chart for the NASDAQ 100 index and what we're seeing right now in the weekly RSI for the NASDAQ 100 index is that the weekly RSI is basically at that 50 level right in the middle of the RSI indicator and historically speaking during the bull markets this level or close to this level is used as support in the weekly RSI while the RSI on the weekly time frame pretty much stays above 50. That is usually good news for the Nasdaq 100 index and really the overall US stock markets on these larger moves here usually multi-month if not multi-year long moves but on the flip side when the weekly RSI breaks below 50 so in the lower half of this RSI indicator that usually means the NASDAQ 100 index is entering into bear market territory. And a bear market in the stock market is defined by a 20% pullback or more from the peak. And so based on the stock market definition for a bear market, we have three bear markets visible on this chart right here, which is of course the bear market the stock market is in right now, the bear market of 2020 and the bear market of 2018. And now obviously that crash, that bear market that technically happened in 2020, pretty much immediately recovered the moment we saw a break back above that 50 RSI level. And the same can be said about the 2018 bear markets, but keep in mind during the 2018 bear markets, we had a few attempts with the RSI tried to push up towards that 50 level but we got some rejections as we got closer towards that neutral level and so basically what was happening in that process was the fact that the stock market was simply having some short-term relief rallies which basically reset the weekly RSI back towards neutral levels giving us more room to the downside later on and if you're looking at the more recent price action and the recent RSI we've actually seen this happen once this year so far which was around March April where obviously the Nasdaq 100 index started its first major leg to the downside towards the end of 2021 entering into early 2022 but then what we saw around March this year was obviously a decent relief rally just a shorter term bounce in the stock markets which basically reset the weekly RSI back towards neutral levels towards this 50 level but we didn't see a proper breakout above the 50 level in the weekly RSI and so instead obviously we got that rejection but at that stage we had a lot more room left to the downside because the RSI at that stage had reset back towards 50 and if you're looking at where the weekly RSI is sitting at right now for the NASDAQ 100 index, it's basically just underneath 50. So as I said in the intro of this video, this really is a crucial time in the markets because over the past one month or so, we've seen a decent relief rally in the stock markets and also in crypto. But keep in mind, this larger downtrend at play here on the weekly timeframe hasn't actually confirmed a full-on bullish reversal. So for all we know, this could just be another relief rally like what we saw in the first quarter of this year, just to reset the RSI giving us more room to the downside later on. Now, as I talked about more in yesterday's video, a lot of this would likely depend on what direction CPI inflation heads in the next couple months. And we do have new CPI data getting released in around one and a half weeks from now, which of course I'll be sure to talk about on the channel as soon as that comes out. Because as of right now, it's the CPI inflation that's really determining what direction the Fed is going to go in terms of their rate hikes or rate cuts and of course quantitative tightening and quantitative easing. And and all of that, all of the Federal Reserve's monetary policy has a huge effect on how markets perform and really what direction markets go. But when it comes to this chart right here, at the moment, technically speaking, we have a lack in confirmation, meaning that we haven't confirmed a rejection or a breakout just yet. So we just need to wait and see a little bit longer to see what actually confirms. And not only that, but like I just said, we have around a week and a half to go until we get new inflation data, which would likely provide more clarity in where markets might be heading next. But all of that is talking about these much larger moves in the market. So if we're zooming into the slightly shorter term and getting into the Bitcoin part of this video, this right here is the 12 hour Bitcoin chart. And obviously we still have that active bearish divergence in play, which I've been talking about for pretty much half a week now. But for anyone who might be new to the channel, basically what this means is that Bitcoin is losing some of that shorter term bullish momentum that we've had over the past couple of weeks, which essentially means the bears are beginning to regain control over the market in the 
the somewhat shorter term here. And not only is this bearish divergence visible on just the 12 hour chart, if you zoom all the way out to the daily Bitcoin chart, this bearish divergence is still visible here. And when you're talking about traditional bearish divergences on the daily Bitcoin chart, as in higher highs in the price action, but lower highs in the daily RSI, this is really the first proper bearish divergence on the daily Bitcoin charts that we've seen since the all time high. And the time before that, we also saw a massive bearish divergence on the daily Bitcoin charts leading into the September 2021 correction. So like I've been saying over the past four days now, these are the sort of signals that shouldn't be ignored. And due to this, I wouldn't be surprised if we do play out a bit more of a pullback here. And then there comes the question of how far the Bitcoin price could pull back. And if we're looking at this 12 hour Bitcoin chart, we do have an ascending line of support, which is coming into play at around $22,000 per Bitcoin. So simply based on this line of support, I'll be looking towards around 22k for a potential bounce. But other than that, we can also look at Fibonacci levels. And so if you're drawing out the Fibonacci retracement tool from swing low to swing high on this 12 hour Bitcoin chart, this places an immediate Fibonacci level of support, which is the 23.6% Fibonacci level. And that is coming into play at around 22.8k. So we could find some short term support around that level. But other than that, I'll be looking towards around 22k and just below 22k we have the second most important Fibonacci level, which is the 38.2% Fibonacci level. And that is coming into play at around 21.7K. And now if we're looking at the Fibonacci retracement tool drawn from the most recent local low just here at around 20.6K, this places the golden pocket, the most important Fibonacci level at around $22,000 per Bitcoin. So once again, just to quickly recap, we have some short term support at around 22.8K. Anything below that, I'll be looking towards around 20 22,000. And then we could also find some support at around 21.7k if we break 22k, of course. And as for resistance, I'll really be focusing on this recent high coming into play at around 24.6 to 24.7k. And we also have this ascending line of resistance, which is coming into play a little bit higher, closer towards 25,000. And also keep in mind, we don't only have a bearish divergence showing a weakening in that bullish momentum here on the 12 hour Bitcoin chart, but we also have a declining MACD on each of these bullish pushes over the past one month or so, we've seen declining bullish momentum on the 12 hour charts for Bitcoin. So this is just another signal, another indicator on the charts that backs up that bearish divergence that we're seeing at the moment, showing a lack in bullish momentum at the moment for Bitcoin. But if you zoom into the much shorter term, taking a look at the four hour Bitcoin charts, what we could see right now is of course the RSI and the MACD trending down as I've been talking about for the past few days, but the four hour Bitcoin RSI has now dropped into the lower half of the RSI indicator, getting closer towards oversold territories. Of course, it's not there just yet, but the closer this gets towards oversold territories, the less room, technically speaking, we have to the downside in the immediate short term, especially based on all of these other times over the past one month where the four hour Bitcoin RSI has entered into oversold territory. So I'll be looking out for that signal moving forward, but we're not seeing that signal as of right now. But other than that, most of these other signals on this chart right here are technically leaning more bearish than bullish. Obviously, we're still in the red when it comes to the MACD. And if you're looking at the Bitcoin price itself on the four hour chart, it's broken below the five day simple moving average. And if you're looking at all of these other times over the past one month where we've seen a break below this moving average, that's essentially confirmed a short term downtrend, a short term pullback for Bitcoin that usually lasts for around half a week or so. So simply based on all of that, based on everything that we've seen over the past one month, especially, it's very likely one of the most likely scenarios for Bitcoin in the short term here is potentially to continue this short term pullback a little further, potentially over the next couple of days. And then if that continues to happen, we would likely see the four hour Bitcoin RSI approach oversold territories, which could give us another short term bottom signal. And in order for this entire short term bearish scenario to be completely invalidated, we need to see a break above this five day simple moving average, which is coming into play at around 23.6k. So if we confirm a break above that level, then basically what I was just talking about would essentially be invalidated. And how I personally would use those invalidation points is let's just say if I'm in a short position, which I am currently shorting Bitcoin and Ethereum, as I talked about two days ago, I would use an invalidation point like that for a potential stop loss. So basically, if the market moves against what I'm expecting, then in that case, that would stop me out of that short trade. And at that price, based on my current positions at the moment, I would still be sitting in a profit on those short positions. Because once again, I entered those short positions a 
couple of days ago when I publicly announced it here on the channel and on my Twitter. And that was when the Bitcoin price was still above 24,000. But anyway, getting into the Ethereum part of this video, this right here is the daily Ethereum chart. And at the time of recording this video, the Ethereum price has basically lost that 1.7K level because for a short time period, just for a few days, the price of Ethereum initially broke above 1700, tried to hold it for a few days. And now once again, we're breaking below it, which is not a good sign. This is not a sign we want to see for Ethereum holders. And on top of seeing the price of Ethereum lose that 1.7K level, which is important, we're also now seeing some lower highs in the daily Ethereum RSI, which have already formed. And technically speaking, this is a bearish divergence as well. Like I said, for the Bitcoin charts, we have lower highs in the RSI, but higher highs in the price action. And the last time this happened for Ethereum on the daily timeframe was back here. It was the end of March entering into early April. We formed higher highs in the price action, but lower highs in the RSI. So once again, based on the fact that we're seeing similar signals at the moment to what we saw back here, personally, I'm more on the cautious side at the moment, because I do expect potentially some more downside price action to come. Now, like I said in yesterday's video, I'm not talking about a move like this. I'm just talking about potentially a shorter term pullback for Ethereum. And speaking of the short term, taking a look at the four hour Ethereum chart. And right now we've seen a break below this five day simple moving average, which is coming into play at around 1.7K. So obviously that's a short term bearish signal for the price of Ethereum, just like how the RSI has been trading to the downside. And of course, a couple of days ago, we saw a bearish cross in the four hour Ethereum MACD. And if you're simply taking a look at all of the other times over the past one month or so that Ethereum has done this on the shorter term timeframes, we've ended up seeing a continued pullback in the price of Ethereum over the next two to three days approximately. So around half a week, just under half a week. But with that being said, we can't forget about this four hour Ethereum RSI because right now we are in the lower half approaching oversold territories. Now, obviously we're not there just yet, but as this four hour Ethereum RSI approaches over oversold territories, obviously we need to keep an eye on it because usually when we enter into oversold territories, that means we have very limited room to the downside in the immediate short term. And in fact, if you're looking at all of the other times over the past one month where we've seen the four hour Ethereum RSI enter into oversold territories, that's essentially marked a local bottom for the price of Ethereum. So moving forward, I'd be looking for signals like that or potentially a bullish cross in the MACD, for example, in order to potentially take profits on those short positions and begin accumulating again. And once again, our point of invalidation is this five day moving average, which is at around 1700. So if we see a confirmed break back above 1700, and we find support along that level again, then in that case, that would basically just cancel out that bearish scenario that I'm talking about here. And as for some support levels to watch out for in the immediate short term, bringing out the Fibonacci retracement tool from the local low up to the local high, what we're seeing at the moment is the price is actually getting some short term support already along this 38.2% Fibonacci level. Level, which is coming into play just above 1600. So around 1.6K is where I'd be looking at for short-term support for Ethereum. And below that, I'll be looking towards the golden pocket, which is coming into play at around 1.5K. And if you're interested in knowing how to make profits in crypto, whether or not the price is going up sideways or down, then check out these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left shows you how to make money if the price is going either up or down. And the video in the bottom left shows you how to make money if we're seeing choppy sideways price action. But anyway, that is everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next video.